what's going on guys. Today I'm going to answer a question that I get asked on a pretty regular basis, not just by means of the Roach Technology Forum, which by the way, if you want to ask me a question, there's a link down there in the description right to the forum, but also just in general, whether it's YouTube comments or emails, and that's on the topic of whether a Hackintosh is right or good or whatever have you for audio editing. Now, I'm not much of an audio guy, as you guys I'm sure mostly know. I'm much more of a video person. I'm always working with video files. I, you know, I do YouTube videos all the time, but not many of you guys may know this, but I actually have an older brother of which does a ton of audio work. He has his own band. He actually just built a little recording studio in his basement of his house, and he uses a Hackintosh as his daily driver. So I thought it'd be awesome to get him on here, and for you guys that are curious about building a Hackintosh for audio editing, uh, I'm sure he has a lot of really good information for you. And if he didn't answer your question in this video, then like I said in the beginning of the video, there's a whole forum right down there in the description that you can click, sign up, and ask away. So I'm done here. I'm just going to go ahead and let my brother do the talking. What's up, everybody? Pat Roach here on behalf of Roach Technology. I know my brother's been getting a lot of questions about is his Hackintosh build uh, sufficient for an audio production setup? And uh, today I wanted to take a few minutes to walk you around my studio. Uh, we'll look at some of the uh, hardware that makes this all possible, including my Hackintosh uh, setup. And then uh, we'll jump right into some screen flow and I'll show you uh, my system performance specs and kind of tie it all together. Okay, so here we are at uh, Command Central here, all right? You'll notice this is one room or element of my project studio. On the other side of that wall uh, is the live room where typically most performances will occur. This is what I refer to as the listening room. Uh, in addition to this, I also do have a... Uh, a vocal slash isolation booth on the side here with a window that uh, is, is comes in in pretty handy too. Uh, and then so in, out in the live room I, I <laughs> I've gone, went ahead and just cut a hole right in the wall and I run all of my wires out there uh, for microphones and such. But let's look at uh, one of the most critical elements of your uh, audio production studio which is going to be an interface. Somehow you need to get all your microphones all together into a box and take that and put it into the computer, right? And so the only way to do this is with an audio interface. Uh, my interface of choice at this time is the Focusrite. I've got a Sapphire Pro 40, which is the unit on the bottom, rack mount unit. And then the one on the top is the Octopre Mach 2 Dynamic. All right, so these two together connect with a um, ADAT uh, optical connection to give me a total of 16 uh, preamp inputs. All that gets taken from one single firewire cable and I went ahead and uh, just cut another hole through my wall here and I run my computer back in to uh, this little uh, housing underneath my stairs and the reason I've done this is because of fan noise. I went ahead and put a nice uh, cooler into my computer. I know uh, Bob of Roach Technology typically recommends this um, to keep your, your system performance uh, uh, running good and, and to keep your computer cool. So, so I went ahead and I just isolated my computer from the room so that I can record vocals and everything else in here. You can certainly opt to go without uh, the cooler. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the system now. We'll grab some screenshots and take a look at uh, the system performance. Okay, so now we are in the box and I wanted to give you a quick rundown on my specs for this this Hackintosh. My processor 3.07 gigahertz Intel Core i7. Uh, memory 12 gigabytes DDR3 memory. While you do not have to have this much, um, typically the more memory you have the better, especially for audio production. You need processing power for some things, especially like exporting or bouncing all your tracks down to an MP3 or WAV format but also uh, while you're working. If you have a lot of channel strips running at the same time with plugins on them, uh, your computer is not going to be able to handle that if it does not have enough uh, cores to distribute the power between and enough uh, uh, RAM to, uh, to run it all. And so let me give you an idea of what we're talking about. So here in this sample track I've got up, I have a whole lot of uh, channel inserts here, right? And so it's a lot happening all at once simultaneously. If I pull up my mixer window, you can see all these separate plugins that I have that are running, you know, at the same time, right? And each of these uses a little bit of processing power. By the time you add all these up and you're playing a track, 
they're going to um, be eating a lot of your processing power. So let's just take a listen uh, to this. What you're seeing is this represents all eight of my cores which are running and the power uh, being distributed amongst them for processing all of this information. And then on the right is my disk in and out. So the way that I record uh, right now I'm pulling this information from a secondary internal hard drive, a 2 terabyte um, 7200 uh, RPM hard drive. And so it's, it's taking uh, processing power and time to read from that drive uh, and then you know record your stuff and then send that recording to the drive and so typically if you're going to see spikes it's going to be in the disk in or out section uh, if you have enough RAM. If you don't have enough RAM, if you're working only with two gigs or four gigs uh, and you have less uh, cores then, then, your, then your power is not going to be distributed evenly enough and you're going to start seeing spikes on here. Anytime you see spikes that means that you're going to have um, you know, missing pieces of information because your computer can't keep up. So this is where you hear the blips and clicking and uh, just enough to ruin your recordings. And so you don't want that. So you always want to be able to have enough enough memory and, and um, power in reserve. So I'm going to go ahead and record my voice, right? And you can kind of see where we're at. So the track's running. My voice is recording. Yeah. So you can see we have a pretty nice balance there between the cores, uh, whereas the disk in and out is typically spiking. And again, if I really needed to control that, what I would do is uh, I would I would move this whole uh, audio file and all of the tracks with it onto my solid state drive that I have as my primary or my boot disk. And that way it allows me to uh, work in, with a solid state disk and then it keeps that uh, hard drive um, disk in and out meter really really low and I run into absolutely zero problems so um, again you know it, hey it's a really good idea to know your system because when people start coming over to record you don't want to be fumbling through it you don't want to run into problems like this when you've got you know six seven guys here uh, ready to record and you're wondering why your you know your CPU usage is through the roof and your disk uh, is clipping and you just can't record them and everybody's getting frustrated. That's the last thing you want to run into. So the reason why the Hackintosh has really uh, been beneficial for me is because I've been able to customize this whole system. And just the perfect example is what I showed you of having the two separate hard disks so that I can have a solid state disk and work really fast uh, when I've got a big session, a lot of guys coming over, uh, or if I'm just laying the bass dubs over for a track somebody sent me, I can just work right off of my 2T and uh, keep everything labeled and, and in line that way. So um, if you have any more questions for me, guys, definitely hit up Bob at Roach Technology. He has been absolutely amazing with uh, tech support. I'm sure he can attest to that. Uh, for me, personally, if ever I do run into issues, I mean, he's always on his email. He's got the phone. He's got his uh, his whole website up and running and uh, this system has worked flawless for me for over a year now and and I wish you all the best of luck uh, in your quest for uh, the perfect the perfect audio uh, recording system uh, if you're thinking about a Hackintosh it's definitely been a great way for me to go alright guys see ya